Greetings and well met, fellowship of gardeners. I come bearing news of the garden ogre. Hey, hold on. That's O R A G E. It's the O R G. Orag. Um, so, <laughs> a name that's still just as strange and Tolkien esque as ogres, but thankfully it's not the huge beast that will devour us all. It's actually quite a fun little pottage herb to add to your garden. It's, go, it's also known as ochre, O A O R A C H E, or sometimes that beginning O is replaced with an A. So, it has a lot of different names that pop up throughout the different garden treatises of the medieval time periods. Thankfully, its Western Latin name has stayed fairly constant, and that is of Atroplex. And um, Atroplex is also found within the um, archaeobotanical record in a lot of different finds throughout Western Europe, um, dating way, way back. So I'm not too sure on the history, still something I'm digging into, uh, but we'll get there. But it is found at least until the 10th century and probably even earlier. Um, and I do believe the Romans had it. I don't know, don't take my word for that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so it is in within the Goosefoot family, which is also where spinach is, and there is possibly a bit of confusion in the archaeobotanical record that maybe perhaps some of the finds that were classified as atroplex might actually be spinach, which is one of its cousins also in the Goosefoot family. So without further ado, let's jump into the garden, into some textbooks, and let's see what Garden Ogre or Ochre is all about. So here we are with good old Thomas Hill, um, 1500s English garden book uh, called The Gardener's Labyrinth. And he has a no lovely little couple paragraphs about garden ochre or orag, um, not ogres. And <laughs> some of the fun things he talks about is that, um, that after you sow them that you cut or break off and that they will keep on bearing leaves, which is really fun. So kind of a really easy cut and come again crop. And then also that it is very water loving. It likes moist soils. And so that with that, I have planted it here. This is the garden ogre, or sorry, oark. <laughs> and um, right next to my skirt that also greatly enjoys a lot of water. So this is my shady water loving bed of medievalness with ochre and uh, skirt. And then eventually I have space over there for some winter spinach, but the little garden gremlins of my servals or slugs or birds are devouring all my spinach seedlings this year. But anyway, um, and you can see here that there's this lovely purple variety and also a green variety. And you're like, hmm, which one is more medieval? Well, happily, thanks to our buddy Gerard, uh, both are noted at least into the 1500s. So we have the garden white, Oark, and once again, you can see now we're back to the spelling of O-R-A-C-H, not O-R-A-G-E. Anyway, um, and let's see. Ah, and then it also comes in a purple color. So both purple and white, and then you scroll over to the next page. And so here is a illustration of the white Oark, and then also of the purple and what's fun is that we are seeing the name Atroplex here again. He goes on to cite a lot of other different types of Atroplex or Orac. So it's pretty fun. Pages and pages of, well, two pages worth of Atroplex, which is quite something. And then there, there's something else called Stinking Orac, which I'm not going to dive into because, yes. <laughs> and then he does a lovely way of Oak, who has so many names, of talking about all the different names that it has within um, the different cultures of Western medieval Europe. So. All right, and so it's been growing great. These are ones that I've transplanted um, from seedlings I started back in May, I believe, um, and they're doing fine. And you can tell that they have this desire to start branching at the sides which then you can foster just by, um, as described, just pinching it off. And what happens with that is you're switching the hormonal flow from its apical meristem to its lateral meristems, and it promotes a bushy form and habit. And you can see here that some of the little leaves there at the notches are starting to grow and develop into their own side shoots, which will make it bushier and healthier to continue to grow. 
the leaf shape you can see is that kind of triangle or sagittate of the goosefoot family. Um, it's called goosefoot because this is a shape that is thought to look like the foot of a goose, so um, the footprints of a goose. Um, the ochre and the, the green and the purple are really beautiful. The purple one is um, easier to find just because it's currently grown as a way to kind of add a little pop and pizzazz into your garden mixes. Um, the green one you still can't find, you have to just do a little bit more searching. Um, you can eat them fresh or bo um, boiled in pottages, and they're often listed in with a whole bunch of other um, pottage types. We can go back here to um, Garden or Thomas Hill, and this dude, even in the same book, now spells it with an A instead of an O and a G. So, anyway, um, you can see that he's listing it both planting and then the harvest with and usage of with all kind of these other just kind of generic um, pottage greens. It's supposed to be really high in vitamin C. I find that it tastes a little bit like a cross between uh, purslane and spinach. And so it has a lot of spinach characteristics. That's common day called also known as mountain spinach. And um, yeah, I have yet to cook with it. I don't know, I've only used it in salad so far. But it's something I look forward to exploring. So there you have it, garden orag or AR or Atroplex. I'll just call it Atroplex because <laughs> there's a lot of names and I can't say them. Um, I encourage everyone to add it to your garden. It's a pretty easy to grow plant um, and it'll provide some lovely high nutrition for you throughout the year and even into the winter if you stay above negative 10. So give it a whirl. There's still plenty of time to start it even here in late August or early fall. Um, remember, to, it does enjoy a little bit of water or more water than some other crops, so plant it in the shade or plant it next to some friends like Skirit, um, and <laughs> it should see you through very well. So I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy, and I hope everyone gets some dirt under your fingernails. Alright, take care everyone.